Hey everyone, today I want to show you how you can put columns on your Canvas page. Just like we see here on this page right here, I have some text there, and sometimes a long bit of text is good, but sometimes you want to break it up into columns like we see on the page. So if I scroll down here, you can see that I have three columns. And I'm going to also look at this at different sizes. And so you notice that as it gets smaller, it moves from three columns to two columns, and then from two columns to one column. And then as we hide that course navigation and it shifts view again, you can see the content is always adjusting. And so it's dynamic in that sense, and that it's not just a fixed value, but it accommodates the screen. So that's called responsive design. So how can you recreate responsive columns for your Canvas page? Now, before we commit too much to this, I just want to put a disclaimer out there that in order to get this effect, we have to leverage the CSS inside of Canvas, meaning you're going to have to either have administrative rights to the Canvas LMS, or you're going to have to work with somebody who has administrative rights. So essentially, that person needs to be able to connect with the theme editor for your Canvas instance. And that's vital for this interaction because we need to upload a CSS file into the Canvas theme editor. So I'm going to take a look at this code that I wrote in an HTML editor. And I'm going to look line by line and show you exactly what I did. So on this page here, I have some boilerplate text and it's three columns and it's balanced, meaning it'll take up those three columns. And you notice that when the screen is really wide, in this case, it only has three lines for the text. And when it becomes smaller, then those lines fill up. And so now we're looking at eight lines and three columns, but the columns get taller as well. And so I can either have short and wide columns, or I can have tall and skinny columns. And you notice this blue bar right here. I'll talk about that in just one moment. But let's look at the class that I created. So in this case, I called the class call three, meaning there's three columns. A CSS class can't start with a number, it has to start with a letter for whatever reason that's beyond my expertise. But you can see that I defined the class right here, call3, and then in this div right here, I have the class and I'm calling it call3, C-O-L-3. So in here, first and foremost, um, this is more housekeeping stuff. I put some padding in here of 15 pixels. If I were to take that out, it doesn't really matter. It just makes the text go right up against the column there. And I don't really want that. And so I just put a little bit of buffer just to make it look pretty. And then I put in a background color so that we can differentiate what element is the column. So the background is gray. And then I have the column background as white. And now I define my columns. I want this to be three columns, and I want the columns to be a minimum of 200 pixels wide. And you notice that when it becomes smaller than 200 pixels wide, then it breaks into fewer columns. And to demonstrate that, I created a div right here, and I put that div as 200 pixels wide, 20 pixels tall, I made it a color, and so that it aligns. So this bar right here is what 200 pixels looks like. And so as I'm big, I'm not worried about touching that 200 pixels. They're all much wider than 200 pixels. But as I shrink it down a little bit, you can see that it approaches 200 pixels. And then when I get smaller than 200 pixels, then it goes from three columns to two columns. And now each column has to be at least 200 pixels. And then when the last two columns get shorter than smaller than 200 pixels, then you can see that it just creates one column. So let's play around. Before I move on, let's play around with the columns right here. So let's make this from 200, let's make it 400 pixels. And I'm gonna change this little div right here as well. So now that's 400 pixels. Now as I scoot it up, now I have three columns, but once it gets to that 400 pixels right about here, then it reduces from three columns to two columns because the columns are shorter than the, three, the 400 pixels that I have defined right there. And then I get to 400 pixels and then it shrinks down. So that's what 400 pixels looks like. You can say maybe 300 pixels or whatever. Let's change this from three columns to four columns. And actually, I'll change this down to 200 pixels again. And now we're going to look at four columns. So here's my four columns. And when the columns get smaller than, I said, 200 pixels, it'll change from four to three, and then from three to two. And where I could stretch it way wide, and you can see that they're all much larger than the 200 pixel minimum that I set. And so you can see those four columns right there. In Canvas, I probably don't see much place for four or five or six columns. I think that two and three columns or the default one column would be sufficient. And so that's what I mean by 
the pixels and the number of columns right there. So I'm going to switch this back down to three columns. And just for fun, I'm going to add another element here. I'm going to put a height and we're going to say this is a height of 300 pixels. And the reason why is because I'm going to change this column fill from balance to auto. And now it's going to use those columns if it needs it. And so you can see if the screen is really wide, then yes, it's three columns, but there's not enough text to fill in the three columns so it stays over there. As I shrink this screen down a little bit, then you can see that it starts filling in those other columns. And I'm going to, right now, I'm just going to take off this pixel count right now as well. And so then there's no minimum. Now if I get really small, you can see it cramps together. So you do want to have a minimum column there. You don't want the columns overlapping on a really small screen. But then you can see as it gets larger, then fewer of the columns gets filled in because there's just so much space for that text to fill. And so that's what auto means. Column fill auto means that it'll start out with one column and it'll just fill up the columns as it needs to. And that's determined largely by the height that I choose here. And so I chose a height of 300. Let's choose a height of maybe 150. So it's going to be half as much. And so you're going to see that those columns start filling in a lot faster. As opposed to when I say balance, then it's going to prioritize finding that balance, even if it means compromising that space, which is why maybe I won't put in the height. I'll just delete that element right there and run that. And then you can see that the height adjusts as it needs to. So it gets taller when I have a smaller screen on the x-axis and then it gets shorter as the x-axis expands. Now this next element here, you see column gap 35 pixel. That means the difference between the far right part of one column and the far left part of the next column. And so let's reduce this to something really small, like five pixels. So when you see five pixels, you can see, yeah, they're just five pixels apart. It's really close together. If it's 55 pixels, it's going to be any lar uh, much larger. If I were to choose something silly like 100 pixels, then you can see that it's very large. And it's just trial and error. I think that 35 pixels looks fine. And now you can see that there's also a differentiation between the columns. And that would be this right here, column rule. I put a four pixel dashed line, and this is the color of that line, which is the blue color that we see here. If I were to change this to something like dotted, then you can see that that changes as well. If I were to change it from four pixels to 10 pixels, then it's going to get a lot wider. And then the color, you can choose whatever color you want for that line. And if I don't have anything at all, then it'll just have uh, columns without any separators. But I like there being separation. And so that's basically the gist of the code that I have right here. And if you want to grab this code, hop over to howtocanvas.com and I'll have a post where you can just take this code. You want to modify it and tinker around with it. And then the next step is going to be, you're going to want to upload that code into a file. And this is what my file looks like. This is my test file. And this is where I put all of my CSS for my institution. And what I did is I said, I have a thing here called columns. And I say, this is a three column container. Each column will be no smaller than 200 pixels as determined by right here. And I can copy and paste that. And I can create another three column with maybe a width of 300 pixels. And so then I would change that to 300 and keep that three. And I can change that to two and call it call two. And I can change it also to two with a 400 pixel minimum. So I can change all of these things for every class that you want. Then you would just create that class in this file. Once you save that file, then you're gonna hop over to your theme editor in Canvas, click on upload and then select the file on your computer and upload that. You want to test it out. So right now I'm in the test installation and I'm testing this page and this page looks good. So behind the scenes, let's take a look at how I did this page. So I have to go to the HTML editor and first I have a paragraph and then I have an HR just to differentiate between that paragraph and the columns. And then I have the same text here, but it's within a div called call three. And then I created another div with that image with the parallax effect. And then I created another content box and it's a three column box. And then I ended it with a picture. And so from the user end, this is all the faculty have to do in order to create a three column thing. They just have to take a paragraph or take a div and call it class equals call three. And then when I save that, then I can see the column three. And again, when I reduce this, then you can see that the columns they either expand or contract from three columns to two columns. 
and then when it gets too small then I just have it one column. And so on a cell phone, on a mobile device, this is probably what they'll see. But if they're on a tablet or a computer or a larger monitor, then they're gonna see that distinction, which is three columns. Now, if you're savvy and you notice this parallax effect right here, the image right in the middle there, that's a different tutorial that I've covered in the past called Parallax Effect. And I'm gonna go ahead and link to that right here. So click on that if you wanna learn how to create a parallax effect with your images. So I hope this is helpful for you. I want to let you know that I do in fact take bribes. So if you want to do a super thanks for this YouTube video, go ahead and click down below. Any contribution helps. I appreciate all of you. And until next time. Happy Disney morning.